So one year ago, I stood right here and I introduced you guys to my plans for 2020 and how 2020 was gonna be the year of the barn. And then 2020 happened. And I think it's safe to say that 2020 has been kind of a rough year. Um, thankfully, we have been healthy. We've been quarantined, we've been safe, and nobody in my family got COVID, which is nice. We're also working from home, so we have an income, and we're very thankful for that. So we have been okay as a family. Um, however, everything that we've been working on for this channel, the barn, the bees, the property, has been horribly delayed and has been incredibly difficult. And it seems like nature was just working against us this year. So that's part of the reason there's been fewer videos this year. It's because there's just been a lack of progress on everything we're working on. However, there is one thing that did go right this year. So as far as the barn goes, I got the first five videos of the barn series up earlier this year. I plan to do the siding and all the trim work the spring and summer and then spend the fall working on the inside to finish out the inside. But due to COVID, there were material delays, tradespeople delays, inspection delays, everything just took forever. That window that you see that's still not in there was ordered in July and I just got it in December. And I still haven't had time to put it up because the weather's been kind of iffy, but as soon as that window goes in, I'm gonna wrap up the siding project and that's gonna be the next barn video. So stay tuned for that. As far as the bees go, this is my fifth season and it was by far my most difficult year with bees, far harder than my first year. We had the driest spring, summer, and fall than, that I've ever seen. There were flowers everywhere, but there was just no nectar flow and the bees were struggling all year to bring in resources. The stronger hives were robbing the weak hives. The weak hives were absconding. I tried making many, many nukes and the, the queens were not coming back from mating flights or they would come back and disappear. It was a really difficult year. So I finished the season with 14 colonies and four nukes. Of the four nukes, three of them are kind of weak. And of the 14 colonies, there's like three really strong ones and a lot of kind of medium strength ones. Um, I'm hoping we have a kind of mild winter so that they, they have a break, but uh, I don't know what my spring is gonna look like. It's, it's gonna be a tough winter. I'm just glad that I was able to feed them as much as I could in the fall, and I got them all wrapped up, and there's really nothing else I can do right now except just wait and hope for the best. So my issues with the bees and the barn took up most of my energy this year, and there were a million other little problems that I don't wanna get into because I want this video to be positive. It's the end of the year, and there is something that went right this year. It's something that I tried, I didn't know if it was gonna work, but it worked, and it worked flawlessly. The two-layer electric deer fence. You can check out this video here for the full story, but basically, I planted this two acres last year in hopes to grow flowers to feed the bees so they could forage over here. But what happened was the deer came out and they, they mowed the whole thing down. They just ate everything that I tried to grow. So this year I tried a two layer electric fence to exclude the deer from this two acres. So back in April, this field was just a scrubby mess of low blueberries and weeds. So I got out the tractor and I rototilled everything down into the soil and made a nice fluffy seed bed. The plan this year was to plant this field with two different plantings of wildflower seeds. I was going to plant one planting in April, let it grow up for a couple of months, then till it down into the soil, and then plant a second planting in mid-season so I would have fall flowers. And this is what everything looked like in late June. So I'm gonna plow this down, just disc it in, just kind of knock it over basically. Spread seed, they go over the discs one more time to put the seed under the, the top of the layer of the soil. And then we're gonna get a few days of rain. Hopefully the seed will germinate and then in about a month and a half, we'll have another bloom of flowers here. This is the mix of seeds that I put on the field in late June. 
And I got it on the field at exactly the right time because the first four days of July is pretty much the only rain we got all summer long. And that was just the right time for this stuff to germinate. All right, welcome back. It is September 18th, 2020. And I have now planted this field twice. And this is gonna be the update on the deer fence and what I'm gonna do now for the fall. This is going to be a third planting which I didn't expect to do, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So the wrap up on the deer fence is that this summer has been a huge success. As you can see now, we've got plants growing all across this whole section here, and there has been no problems with deer getting in there and eating the seedlings. We did have one breach up here earlier this year. I noticed came up here one day and the wire was unhooked from one of the uh, posts. And it looked like something ran across the field and took out the wire, but I just hooked it back up and it was fine. There was no evidence of anything getting eaten in here all summer long. So this fence worked perfectly. I've been dealing with a deer problem here for years and this worked. It's the first thing that's worked. So the big problem we had this year was the drought. I, I did everything right in the spring. I got everything rototill, disked. I put down the spring seed in late April and thinking it would have May and June to grow up and we got we just got no rain in June we had a little rain in May and things sprouted but nothing grew everything was stunted everything was short there were tons of bare patches because we just didn't have enough rain June was completely dry the entire month so I made the decision at that point to plow down the growth that we had because I knew we had a week of rain coming in July so I came out here the last week of June, dissed everything into the ground, and then I put down 200 more pounds of seed. And luckily, we had a lot of rain the first week of July, so everything germinated really well and started to grow. We have had almost no rain for the last like month and a half, but the little bit that we did have got this stuff to grow a lot better than that early spring planting. So we had a lot of buckwheat, we had, I don't even know what all this is, this is like a mix of stuff, but it grew up pretty well and it's very green and it was, it was flowering in July. So the bees had some forage in here. So what we're doing today here is I've been trying for years to get clover to take root in this area of the field. I keep trying to seed clover every spring and I seed it and the grass overtakes it and the, the clover never takes and I've tried for, for years and years. So what I've been reading and hearing about clover is that it needs to be planted kind of late winter. Like you plant it over frosty ground before anything grows so that the seeds will work their way into the soil once the, the frost thaws and then it comes up first thing. The other option is to do a fall planting and try and get some roots established so that that will burst open in the springtime before the grasses start to grow. So what I'm gonna to do today is disc, use the discs and just knock this all down. I'm not gonna till it in, I'm just gonna knock it over and I'm gonna plant 50 pounds of clover on these two acres. And that's a lot more than I need, but I'm gonna give it a shot because a 50 pound bag was a hundred bucks. I'm gonna try it. If we get some roots established, hopefully in the spring some will come up and then I might do another planting uh, in late winter and just do an overseeding of everything, like maybe another 50 pounds, and see what comes up and hopefully get this whole patch in white clover for next summer. White clover. Okay, now we wait. So this electric fence has been a total success and I'm very happy with it. And it was not a huge investment. It was probably about $400 for everything with the charger plus the wire and the stakes. Um, four or 500, I think, for the whole thing. And this will last for years. So not a big investment for a successful deer exclusion, so. So yeah, we had a rough year of beekeeping, a rough year of growing everything, but the one 
positive thing that happened in 2020 was the deer fence worked. So something I learned this year, deer fence was a good investment and I'm gonna keep doing it. And I may even fence in more areas now that I know this works. So as you can see, it's now December. The fence is still intact. The two on the inside, the one on the outside. We've even had quite a bit of snow and ice and it's still standing. The snow's melted and we got a lot of rain the other day, but you can see green out there. And that's clover mostly. That was planted in September and it took root. So I'm hoping that it survives the winter and takes off in the spring and we have a field of white clover. This was a very, very successful project. And uh, I'm definitely doing this again in the spring, if it doesn't survive the winter, I'll be repairing the fence and putting it right back up. So the bottom line is the deer fence kept the deer away and I was able to plant this field three times, including a fall planting of clover, which I hope will take root and then come out in the springtime. And I also spread about a thousand milkweed pods all over this field. So that's like 100,000 milkweed seeds all over the place out there. So hopefully we also have a whole bunch of milkweed for the bees in the springtime. Can you guys see the moon right there? It looks pretty amazing in person. Anyway, so I know 2020 has been a rough year for a lot of people and my problems pale in comparison to what I know a lot of other people are going through, but I do appreciate you guys spending the time to watch the videos that I do put up and for all your support and your comments and your likes and all that stuff, it, it really means a lot. It is fun for me to make these videos and it's fun for me to share good news. And this year just didn't have a ton of good news. So I'm hoping next year is better. I'm not leaving YouTube. I'm not quitting videos or anything. I just want to have fun things to share and I'm going to share them when they come up. So a couple more days of work on the barn and I can wrap up the siding video and hopefully get that up pretty soon. And I've got other bee videos in the can that I just have to edit and put up and tell you a few more stories about the bees from last summer. So thank you so much for watching again and I wish you all the best and I hope you're healthy and hope you have a good new year. That moon looks amazing.